In this video, we talk about translators, in particular three types, interpreters, compilers and assemblers. As humans, we pick a programming language and we write what we call source code. Source code is descriptive and easy for us to understand, read, maintain and debug. However, it's no good for machines. They need the source code first converted into pure binary so they can understand and execute it on a processor. This pure binary form of our original source code is known as machine code. The process of converting your source code into machine code is known as translation. Now, no matter how it happens, there are three types of translators that take source code and ultimately turn it into machine code. There's assemblers, interpreters and compilers, and you're required to know about the difference. Here in this diagram, we can see we've split the top half into what we call low level languages and the bottom half into high level. So low level languages are written in what we call assembly code. We've made reference to it in previous videos and we look at it in more detail in some other later videos. Assembly code is translated by what is called an assembler. It takes the mnemonics of the assembly code and translates them typically in a one-to-one -one relationship directly into machine code that can be executed on a specific processor architecture. High level languages can be translated in one of two ways. They can be interpreted, which is currently being shown here. An interpreter takes one line of source code, translates it, and then executes it. It's quite a straightforward process. The other way of translating high level source code is what's called compilation. Now compilation takes your entire source code in its entirety and converts it or translates it. If it's successful, it then produces the machine code output. The situation is also slightly more complicated. For example, here you can see the compiler is translating the source code into what is known as object code. A linker program is then pulling in any additional libraries you may need. At this point, one of two things may happen. The finished machine code may now be produced immediately, which is your executable binary file. Or an additional intermediate state could be created that we call intermediate code. And then this could be further interpreted to actually be turned into and run the final machine code. Now, don't worry too much about this at this stage. All the aspects shown here, including linkers and intermediate code, are explained in later videos. The important things to remember here is assembly code is translated by an assembler, and high level language code is translated by either an interpreter that does one line at a time, or a compiler that translates the entire source code in one go. So let's take a look at the difference. So here we're going to look at an example of a compiler. Now I've got a short program at the top here and I've deliberately got an error in line two. Line two should say print, so that's a syntax error. I've put P-R-I-N and I've gone to run that program and you can see the output at the bottom there. You can see we have an error on line two, which is preventing our program from running. This error needs correcting before the program will run as shown here. And this is the essence of a compiler. It won't run unless all the errors in the code are corrected first. It tries compiling the entire program before executing it. So this is exactly the same program as the one we just saw in Python. However, this time we've written it in a very early high level language called BBC Basic. Now this is interpreting the language. So let's see what happens when I run it. 
Well, again, I've got an error here deliberately in line 30. It says NXT and it should say next NEXT. But you can see the program has partially executed. The first line, line 10, has executed and been run. And the second line, line 20, has executed and run. And indeed, it's printed out the contents of the variable counter to the screen. It's then reached line 30 and it's discovered a mistake. So with an interpreter, we are translating each line of code and then running it before moving on to the next. So I can correct the syntax error in line 30. Let's just do that now. And then if I run it, you can see the program runs exactly the same as the earlier version did with the compiler. What we've got presented on the screen here now is a nice summary. Now I'm not going to read it all to you. This will be an excellent point to pause the video and take some notes. We've got the three main types of translators across the top and we've provided a description and some advantages and disadvantages of each type. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How does source code written by a programmer become binary code that a computer can execute? Thank you.